Over three million people die from hemorrhagic stroke every year around the world and those who survive are often left with long-standing disability. Hi, I'm Chris Anderson, Chief of Stroke and Cerebrovascular Diseases at Brigham and Women's Hospital and Associate Professor of Neurology at Harvard Medical School. And this is Clues to Cures, History of a Cure for Hemorrhagic Stroke. Hemorrhagic stroke is a devastating neurologic condition. It occurs when a blood vessel breaks inside the brain and causes blood to leak out, injuring the brain inside of the skull. This blood pushes on the brain and causes nerve cells to begin to die in just a few minutes. The blood vessel that bursts can be due to an underlying condition such as an aneurysm or arteriovenous malformation, or due to long-standing weakening of the blood vessels due to conditions like hypertension or high blood pressure. Millions of people around the world die from hemorrhagic stroke every year, and those that survive are often left with lingering symptoms such as weakness, speech and swallowing difficulties, and even dementia. Over 2,000 years ago in ancient Greece, Hippocrates, who's considered by many to be the father of modern medicine, grouped stroke into a collection of diseases that he called apoplexy, which in ancient Greek meant struck down by violence. In his eyes, patients with stroke seemed just fine until they were suddenly affected by symptoms that he could not explain, such as an inability to speak, an inability to move part of their body, or in some cases, sudden death. Early physicians believed that there was some connection between the heart and the brain that was related to stroke, but it wasn't until the 1600s that physicians determined that there were really two forms of stroke. One in which a blood vessel is blocked, depriving the brain of blood, that's called an ischemic stroke, and the other in which blood vessels burst, causing blood to leak into the brain, called hemorrhagic stroke. While in ischemic stroke, there are several new innovative therapies that we can offer to remove blood clots and restore blood flow, treatment of hemorrhagic stroke remains limited and is often focused on preventing the hemorrhage from happening in the first place, as well as novel treatments to limit the damage caused by the bleeding and to prevent bleeding from happening again. As soon as a patient with hemorrhagic stroke arrives at the hospital, medical teams work to quickly lower their blood pressure to limit further bleeding, as well as to reverse the effects of any medications being taken to thin the blood. If the hemorrhagic stroke is due to an aneurysm or blood vessel malformation, surgeons work to repair the blood vessel before it has a chance to bleed again. But so far, there is no treatment that's been proven to stop or reverse the damage caused by hemorrhagic stroke. But several research studies are ongoing investigating ways that that might happen. The biggest risk for hemorrhagic stroke comes from elevated blood pressure or hypertension. Researchers at Mass General Brigham are working hard to discover new ways to identify patients who are at a high risk of hemorrhagic stroke or a high risk of hard to treat blood pressure using things like genetics, social determinants of health, and other risk factors. For instance, there are tiny differences in our genetic code, and each one of those differences contributes slightly to our risk of many diseases, for instance, hemorrhagic stroke. If we add each of those tiny risks together, we can create something called a genetic score, which collectively tells us about the risk of a patient across a distribution and can identify those who are at a particular risk of an outcome, like stroke, and who might benefit specifically from treatments to prevent it. With that kind of personalized risk information, we can pair the right treatment and the right kind of attention with the right patient, working to reduce the risk of hemorrhagic stroke and preventing this deadly event from happening. Thank you for watching. Click here for more Clues to Cures videos.